sometimes you, umbrellas can be useful. This story comes to us from a, a place called Combat Picks on Instagram, and I absolutely love it. Catherine, walk us through what happened here. Well, I'm surprised you love it because the first sentence is the British major who carried an umbrella into battle. Exclamation just, point. <laughs> exclamation point. If you had someone in your unit carry an umbrella into battle, I feel like you would send them to the back of the line. Uh, <laughs> by the way, most British name ever. Oh, Dig this name. Thank you for pointing it out. It <laughs> <Yeah>. is unbelievable. <laughs> Digby Tatham Water. Oh, it's, it's me. It's, it's it. Digby Tatham Water. Digby Tatham Water was wait, born wait, wait. in... And he was born in Shropshire, England on May 21st, 1917. His father had served in the British Army during World War I. He was gassed and died when Digby was only 11 years old. Digby graduated from the Royal Military College in 1937 and volunteered for the Airborne Forces after his brother was then killed in 1942 in the Battle of Al Almain. Troops knew Major Digby by the umbrella he carried, as he said, because he couldn't remember passwords and anyone would recognize the bloody fool carrying the umbrella as an Englishman. He was, <laughs> he's not wrong. He was appointed as the commander, as a company commander of a company in the second parachute battalion, part of the British one. Sorry. He was appointed as the company commander for the British first airborne division. And his company was chosen to lead the second parachute battalion in the battle of Arham, part of operation market garden. Another very British Name. <laughs> Operation Market Garden. Don't mind if we do. Uh, once They're a trying to back that little garden on fucking Notting Hill. Yeah, Con, you, got, you got your tea for the right round. Once a <laughs> company had landed at their drop zone, they made their way to Arnhem. Arnhem. They managed to travel eight miles in seven hours while also taking 150 German prisoners. However, they experienced heavy resistance from German forces when approaching and attempting to capture a bridge. At one point, the 9th SS Panzer Division seemed to push successfully across the bridge. Digby personally then led a bayonet charge while wearing a bowler hat and successfully drove the German attack back. What a flex. This <laughs> we haven't even got to the good part yet. This next part is going to blow your dick off. Yeah, so right now Digby is pushing German SS psychopaths back across the bridge with a bowler hat on. Uh, he then later disabled a German armored car with his umbrella, incapacitating the driver by shoving the umbrella through the car's observational slit and poking the driver in the eye. I believe somewhere Mr. Bean <laughs> smiled when that happened. I the, mean, uh, what a move. If you're at a bar and you're old fucking Digby and you're telling him about what happened in the war, you're like, oh, yeah. And then I, I saw him on there and I was up there in the German car and I saw this little thing. And he put me umbrella and then he poked him in the eye. It was an Australian bar. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he poked his little observation slit, and I believe it made the sound doink when he did it, when he poked the umbrella into the and hole. And probably, as soon as he poked them, he brought it back, and one of those little fake guns things with the little flag that says bang, bang. came out. <laughs> yeah. And then when he put it, went pew. Uh, when the chaplain came under slide enemy fire. Slide whistle sound Yeah, effects. there was a slide whistle in there somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, when the chaplain came under enemy fire while trying to cross the street to get to injured soldiers, Digby ran to his aid and said, don't worry about the bullets. I've got an umbrella. He then Put escorted... that on a fucking t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, put that, print it out. Don't worry about the bullets. I've got an umbrella. He then escorted the chaplain across the street under his umbrella. Uh, when, oh he when he returned to the front line, fellow British officer, Lieutenant Pat Barnett said about his umbrella, that thing won't do you any good. To which you never say that to Digby. You never tell Digby uh, because this is what Digby said. Get your kids out of the room if they're listening. Oh my goodness, Pat, but what if it rains? <laughs> no. You, don't want own. you have no response there. If you, you can't say the say umbrella's it. not going to go too good and you're like, ah, well, what if it rains? Right. So you get this is punked him. I got his ass. Out of ammunition and cut off from the rest of the Allied forces, Digby and his men sent a last radio message out of ammo, God save the king, and surrendered. So, absolute hero of the day, Digby Tatham Warder, with his umbrella and his bowler hat, fucksing up the SS and the German forces. What happened to him after? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't want to know. If he got killed, I don't want to hear about no, it. I, right. yeah, we'll just leave it at that and just to let your imagination run I assume he's still well. alive and just like 150 years old. Yeah. I feel like Still carrying him, that umbrella. Yeah. He lost his father when he was 11 in the war, and then he lost his brother, and I think this the deepest, most, he's from Shropshire, England, the deepest, most British part of him was like, well, fuck it. 
Like, you know, like, let's fucking put on his bowler hat and, and grab his umbrella. Keep calm, you carry on. That you have shoved an umbrella through a German vehicle and poked somebody in the eye where they incapacitated them. What else can you possibly do for the rest of your life that's going to match that? Nothing. Because, too, Nothing. you know, if you're that German SS soldier, you're German SS. <laughs> And you you're go supposed home. to be a badass. You're supposed to be like this super hard. You're supposed to be the best of the best for the, right. the, the Germans are throwing at them. You can never tell anyone what happened to you. Ever. No. You're a big it's like what that happened? dude that goes to Inglorious Bastards and he has to report back to Hitler what happens and he mm-hmm. has the swastika on his head and he, yeah. he has to let him know. Like he goes in there and he's shaking. He's like, what happened? We heard you that you got hit by an umbrella. And he's like, uh, no, yeah. that's, that's not what happened at all. You don't yeah. want to let anybody know that. Man, Digby. I, I'm all about so, Digby. It's hero of the day. Digby, number one. I think that's a great name for a dog. Not to disparage oh, yeah. this gentleman, but I think mm-hmm. Digby would be a phenomenal dog name. I agree. Digby chewing on an acorn. Yeah. Number two, I need to know more about why he had a bowler hat in his, in his possession. he's now, fucking British, dude. I get <laughs> yeah. it. But they in all combat, do. But in combat, even in combat, they, they have a bowler hat just in case. I think it's that same level of don't give a fuck that Lieutenant Dan had, where once you have that kind of heritage, you have to go out and stand out. Like, this is just part of who you're supposed to be, so you might as well just bring an umbrella and a bowler hat and call it a day. But the thing that made me laugh about this story is because I hate the umbrella so much, it made me think if we – because we all have had forgetful moments on this show. Cons thought that Greenland was as big as Australia. <laughs> Kate constantly forgets stuff. Kyle, I didn't know. I don't know. Kyle's got a pretty today. good memory. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. For, I forget fucking anything and everything that comes along my way. So it got me thinking: if we had a signature trademark that we forgot the password, because in those times they were changing the password pretty frequently in, mm-hmm. in case they got intercepted. Going out and thinking that it's still Egg McMuffin and you come back and it's actually Umbrella Carrier could be confusing if you're running back across the enemy lines. So I want to start with you, Kate. If you had a trademark that they, you're coming back to the bridge, getting back on friendly fire, our friendly lines, and you're leading us a, a patrol back and you're trying to get everybody back, what would be something that you could wave in the air and everybody knows here comes Katie? Two first thoughts. For one, the first thing that popped to my mind for some weird reason was a Toblerone bar. Yeah, that was weird. I saw you write that one on the sheet and I was like, immediately. Toblerone bar is not something that I associate you with. Whenever I was deployed, that was like my, like, I ate one, I ate like four of them on the plane to deployment and like eight of them on the way back. I don't know. I just always had, (laughs) when I was on a plane or traveling, I always had a Toblerone. To my tramp stamp, probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just so wagging you just the shamrock. Over, you would just turn around and whip up your shirt. Okay. And cons for you to make you cross back over, I would make you name the parts of a vulva. True. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, good if, luck. If, You're if, never crossing. I could actually <laughs> see you doing that as like a battalion commander. It's just women's stuff. <laughs> <laughs> What's our password for the day? Uh, when was the, the Women's Voting Rights Act passed? Yeah. <laughs> Um, if it were me, I would just simply take off my pastel ascot that I wore in combat and wave that bad boy around. Oh, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Fancy. Obviously, um, one, one thing I used to do, and it, it was it was a, a function thing, but it was actually something that I don't know, for whatever reason, made, made me feel like a real tough guy. But I would roll my sleeves up, but like underneath the, the, the cuff. So you couldn't really see that it was rolled kind of like, you know, how you guys roll them in the, the Marines and you can mm-hmm. clearly see this. I would just do one roll under. So my sleeves just look very short. So as an officer in the heat of battle, you're like, look very, very closely at my imperceptible <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that would work, Cons. That yeah. probably sure wouldn't that work. Or, I don't know. Maybe they'd be like, oh, look, there it goes. Uh, no, it wouldn't work. Um, or the other thing I would do that was very annoying. Maybe a monocle for you. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> or maybe, yeah, uh, that could work also. Um, but no, one other thing that would annoy my commander to no other, when we were out on our remote outpost, if I wasn't going outside the wire that day, I just didn't put my ACUs on. I'd be in PTs. It'd be the middle of the day. Nobody else would be in PTs. And I would be walking around in PTs, and I knew that would annoy him. So I don't know. If you, if you caught me at like 1 o'clock in the afternoon and I was in PTs, then you would know it was me. I am absolutely shocked you didn't go with an Uncle Rico type of moment there and say that I would throw a football from 100 yards out. <laughs> right. And it would I come agree. Across and I thought like, it was oh, going to be something about back. football. I thought it was going to be That is absolutely – That would work. Most, that is – might be the most shocking thing that's happened since we've had the 300th episode, no <laughs> mm-hmm. doubt about it. Imagine, though, I'm just walking like, hey, give me that rock, and then I just fire it. That would work. 
I like that. <laughs> Mine would be like, I'd probably have toilet paper. <laughs> I'd just be flashing around like, y'all, you got to let, you got to let Seth's arm back boot. in. He's got to get to the porta potty. He's, he has <laughs> diarrhea. He's yeah. in, in the patrol early. Yeah, that's Chaps. Let him through. Yep, <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. that's Chaps and his group. They're coming I'll, in. He'll be fine. One more thought, too, on the bowler hat in combat. I feel like there's these small little things leaders can do where if you, to me, wearing a bowler hat fighting the SS is laughing directly in the face of death. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the morale boost that if you're a commander that that has to give your soldiers – well, like I'm terrified, but I'm looking at my commander in a fucking bowler hat, just fucking going to town. I'm like, all right, let's fucking go. Like that's so motivated to me for some reason. And I, I think know. there's something to be said about the psychological effect. Like if you, if we ever went to combat, not with like insurgents where you have to be like out in the communities, but like legit big force versus big force again and you're mm-hmm. going at it and you wear like one of those creepy masks like the joker has on yeah. the joker movie that everybody else is wearing and your entire platoon or battalion is like all right motherfuckers the chaplain said his prayer let's gear up bitch lock it and load and everybody comes in in clown mask holy fuck yeah right I would, I would think twice about going up against a forest looking I like I mean, that. you have everybody in full battle rattle wearing nothing but clown mask. Ha, huh, buddy, the joke's on you. You're about to get fucking slayed. Yeah. I would have everyone in the little clown hat with the helicopter thing on top that spins around. The enemy <laughs> or you're going up to, to question somebody and you pull out the knife hand and all of a sudden it's connected <laughs> to one of those flowers that squirt right in their face. Like, ah, I got your goose. <laughs> you flinch. Now you have to marry your mother-in-law. Then I pull out my slide whistle again. <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you this call in the morning yeah. <laughs> that should be the new reveille yeah, it should be uh i'm i'm not you guys know i'm not a tattoo guy but i would think i think it's very intimidating if you have really good forearm tattoos and they yeah. can be visible you're i think gonna that's super love intimidating. the end of round number two I yeah you should see when i first got back i got my john basalon basalon tattoo uh right before i got promoted to staff sergeant and my first sergeant, Lugo, I was like, hey there, Gunny, whenever you come back and you get that fucking rocker, dog, I cannot wait to see you pull out that knife hand with Barcelona right in somebody's fucking bitch ass face. Oh, and yeah. like, you're absolutely right. Because there's nothing you could say. I haven't done a Lugo voice. I was going to say, I, I, I missed first sergeant it. Lugo. Yeah, I was glad to hear him. <laughs> it's good, though, because if we do it too much, then people won't appreciate it. So I was, well, I, was happy to I hear have him. terrible news. He blocked me. Like, he what? blocked my phone number. Yeah. He what? Heard it. <laughs> he heard me talking shit. He thought I was making fun of him. It's not because I was making fun of him. It's because I respect him. He blocked my phone number. <laughs> Give me first Arden Lugo's phone number. I'll be like, hey. We'll hey make there, this right. Hey there, devil dog. I'll, I'll get you squared away. I, well, mm-hmm. I have his wife's phone number. <laughs> from whenever she was pregnant and I called her and say, congratulations. So if he doesn't unblock me within the next month, I'm going to call her and be like, look, you need to put Jose on the phone. I need to talk to him, <laughs> but I would never call Jose to his face. <laughs> hey, put, hey, put top Lugo on the phone. Yeah. He's one of those that you, res- you know, you respect somebody as a leader whenever you get out and you've been out for a long time mm-hmm. and you still call them the rank oh, yeah. that you knew that there were. there's certain people that I'm like, Hey, what's up Gunny? When I still talk to him. Yeah, absolutely. There are certain people I, I would I would never not call them sir. They'd be mm-hmm. like, even people have said like, all right, Connor, like I'm retired now. You can call me so and so. I'm like, no way. That would be too weird. Yep, completely agree. All right, let's move on to round number two. 